Safe Pasture Purpose Find the safe pasture. The hardest part of writing a book is the first line. With 15 books published, I should have this hard part mastered, but as I begin writing this most important book, I struggle once again with the first line. Tonight, exhausted from another day of grieving over the loss of my love, Woody, coupled with an attempt to make this first inadequate line adequate, I go to bed early and fall into a deep, restless sleep that soon becomes shallow and useless. Wait upon the Lord. I try to convince myself until finding I'm wide awake at midnight. At this point, I begin rereading social media posts and public and private messages from the last 20 months, praying something will jump out at me. And jump it does. A message from Art Bailey. Art is one of Woody's high school best friends, and one Woody was quite proud of since Art worked 30 years with Billy Graham. Woody would have been thrilled, was thrilled, when Art's voice echoed through the historic tombstones of Chapel Hill Cemetery in North Mississippi, with Art giving Woody's eulogy entitled, The Toughest Guy I've Ever Known. No surprise here, it was Art giving me the first line. In several private messages to me after Woody's death, Art encouraged me by quoting Bible passages, messages from God to guide the rest of my life before I join my love in the presence of Jesus. The biggest encouragement was letting me know more life for me is possible, something I struggle with daily. Art's first message. Find the safe pasture, Sue. God has more life for you. My word from the word for you is Psalm 37, 3 through 4, New International Version. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now it is 2.23 a.m. and I sit at the keyboard pecking away, explaining the purpose or purposes for writing forever and then some. The first purpose is a selfish desire on my part to recap those special moments and events. The adventures, joys, not always joys, and sometimes traumatic circumstances that shaped this 50-year-long love story. A story worthy of retelling. My hope is couples of all ages, including my children and grandchildren, who read our story, will find the desire and tenacity for making their marriages the best they can be. Don't get me wrong, ours is no pattern for a perfect marriage. That would be something best saw within the pages of Billy Graham's autobiography, Just As I Am, or in watching Nanny Clifton's favorite old movie, Love Story. Ours is simply the story of a blended family led by a couple who begins their marriage with more imperfections than are allowed, usually. As an author, I have written in many genres, but contemporary Western romance, fiction, has been the genre most identifying me until now. Forever and Then Some fits well in the romance category, except this story is entirely true and is the most important book I have written or will ever write. It is also, predictably, the last book I will write. Synopsis A man and woman, each already having a son, meet in their mid-twenties, marry after a sinfully short courtship, have a baby girl together nine months and three days after marrying, and form a blended family. From the beginning, their individual idiosyncrasies are stacked against this couple like barriers made from boxes stacked high in a warehouse, forming a maze. Daring each reader to try to decipher the best route to happiness and marital longevity, but hitting a warning sign. Don't count on it. The young woman's own mother warns her about this new guy. But this young couple proves they are intent on making their marriage 